Well, welcome back. We are coming to you live from McAllen, Texas this morning. We are at the U.S.-Mexico southern border all morning long. Joining me right now is former acting director of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement and Fox News contributor Tom Homa. And Tom, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. And thanks for all of the work that you've been doing. We just showed a piece from the Criminal Investigation Divisions of the Texas Department of Public Safety. Lieutenant Christopher Oliveira showed us the guns that have been seized, explaining that the cartels are smuggling them into Mexico to use against the United States. So bottom line, these guns are from America. They are smuggled into Mexico so that the cartels can use these weapons against Americans, among others. Yeah, what's going on right now, the cartels are making more money right now than they've ever made. They're, right, they're moving record amounts of drugs because the border's open. 70% of the border patrol agents are no longer on the line. So the cartels are moving massive amounts of drugs, more than ever before. They're moving massive amounts of people. Either they're trafficking in women and children for the sex trade, they're sm or they're pushing aliens across, turning themselves into Border Patrol, or they're pushing aliens into inner cities who pay more because they don't want to turn themselves into Border Patrol. The cartels are making more money they've ever made. And that's why they need more, more, more weapons, not just against Americans, but against each other. Yeah. Cartels are, are battling each other for control of the plazas because of the money. Yeah, well, look. We've been here now, I've been here myself five times, and one of the times that I got here, I told you this in the break, one time when I got here, we were embedded with Brandon Judd's team, and we were with the border agents, and as we watched kids coming from the river and onto land, uh, they were like, a couple of kids, 11 years old, 10 years old, they looked to me, two girls, they were alone. And so the border agents go over to them to try to apprehend them and talk to them. As the border agents approach this little girl, 11 years old, first thing she does is she pulls up her shirt. I was horrified because it was clear to me that that's what she thought she had to do when faced with authority. So you talk about the trek over here. It's so incredibly dangerous. These young girls are getting raped. Yeah, you know, Doctors Without Borders did a study and said 31% of women that make that journey get raped. And during my career, I've talked to girls as young as 11 and 12 that were raped numerous times. Um, I just got back from Brooks County, Texas, and I heard that uh, one of the, the authorities there told me about uh, a child 18 months old that was raped. Oh, my uh, God. When, the, when, the, when they did an autopsy and the young child died, the, the forensic review showed the child was sodomized. Oh, God, this is so hard to take. But you talk about rape. Let's talk death, because you were here at the border last week. You took this video of a mobile morgue. This is a morgue at the Brooks County Sheriff's Office with 41 migrants inside this morgue that they've reported a stunning 187 migrant deaths since Biden took office, costing the sheriff's office nearly one million dollars. Tom, tell me what we're looking at here. Well, I was out there with uh, two organizations, DefendTheBorder.org and, the, and the, the American Project. We're out there working with the Brooks County Sheriff's Office, and this is the Portable Morgue. Brooks County Sheriff has already found 187 dead migrants. That's what they found, and the sheriff says they find about one in five. So, you know, the, the, the regular facility is overflowing. Governor Abbott gave them this portable morgue. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's packed. It's only, there's only two empty spaces. Oh, my God. The body, that, the first body you see there that hasn't been stacked up yet, that was one of the bodies we recovered. I was on the ground with the sheriff's department for four hours. And within four hours, two recoveries. So the, the sheriff has already said it's almost a million dollars in the hole because of the cost of all tops and burials that the federal government won't reimburse them. Oh. But the good thing is that the, the, the men and women, the sheriff's department, just one sheriff and four, four deputies, 187 recoveries. And they tried really hard to identify them. And one of the bodies we found were, was pretty badly decomposed, but there was enough flesh on the hands. Oh, my God. They were trying to inject water into the hand to bring the fingerprints out so they can actually try to identify the person. They worked very hard to try to get these people home to their families. But most instances... There's too badly decomposed. So, About to decompose in a week out there in the, the, the Texas heat. The, the migrants are trying to make the trek into America. And when something happens where they're caught or they lose their group, they get lost in the brush and then they die of starvation. I mean, is that what happened? And then they're, they're dying in the brush? Many die in the brush uh, from heat exhaustion and, and no, you know, lack of water. But some are some are murdered by the cartels. They had one. They had one case where they showed me uh, a female that was yeah. Uh, her 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 decomposed uh. remains. Her legs were spread. Undergarments around her ankle. 
and with a broken with with, with a broken ankle, Ugh. so she could not leave after she was assaulted. Greg and she Abbott, died like that. Greg Abbott is taking matters into his own hands. These migrants are coming to this border, and he's busing them and sending them to Washington. So more buses arrived in D.C. overnight from Texas. Nearly 60 migrants on each bus. The mayors of D.C. and New York City want federal funding. They claim they're overwhelmed by an influx of illegal migrants, and that the governors of Texas and Arizona are to blame. There's been a recorded 1.7 million illegal migrant encounters so far in time. We know that doesn't include the gotaways. Almost a million gotaways. They, we see them on surveillance cameras. We don't know what their intentions are. They're gone. They're in the country. Oh, what's disgusting. Neither one of these mayors said a damn thing when, when the Biden administration was busing people to their cities in the, heat, in the darkness of the night, sneaking them in. But when a Republican governor does it, it's an issue. If I gave advice to one of those governors, first of all, end your sanctuary city policies, because illegal aliens are going to your cities anyway, yeah. because you're protecting them, even if they commit a crime, That's you're good not point. working with ICE. And the second point is you want to stop the, the, the influx? If you want to stop the death we just talked about, if you want to stop the rapes we just talked yeah. about, Tell the president to secure the board and do his job. Right. Well, how about don't blame Governor Abbott. Pick up the phone and call Joe Biden. Governor uh, Abbott should be the secretary of Homeland Security. He's done more to secure this board than anybody. He has done an incredible job. Tom, great to see you. And you have done an incredible job. Thank you. Tom Holman. We'll be right back. Stay with us live from McAllen, Texas this morning.